Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today on this Allegory Gallery video tutorial. This is going to be another tutorial by Jen Tushan, and she will be teaching us some lovely earrings. These are a little bit more advanced than some of our other tutorials have been, so you may want to check out the previous ones if you haven't already. That's not to say that this one is terribly difficult, but you'll just want to follow along closely to be successful at making these. I will say that all of these video tutorials have kits in the online store that are already cut and ready for you to make. Everything's sized, you have the right number of pieces, so if you want to purchase one of these kits, just go to allegorygallery.com and go to our online store. Also, down in the video description, you will see a link directly for this kit for this video. And of course, if you like these videos, we hope that you will hit that subscribe button hit those like buttons, and share these videos with your friends. So, let's go ahead and see what Jen has in store for us today. Hey Jen, how are you today? I'm good, how are you William? Good! So, what are you making for us today? Today we're going to do something a little bit more complicated, okay. a little bit more wire wrapping. Um, these are called the Grateful Hippie. And these are so cool. They're fun and they're light. They're a little Absolutely. bit long, but a little fun. Great. So, how do we get started? All right. So, the first thing I'm going to do is assemble um, the top wires. And that's these thinner little pieces of wire you'll get. And so, when you say top wire, which piece of this are we looking at? The top right here. Okay. So, I like to work our earrings going down the length of All them. All right. All right, so on this piece of wire, and you're gonna need a um, round nose plier or um, this handy dandy little multi-sized jump ring maker. And we're gonna grab that wire right in the middle. And I'm gonna do a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna wrap that around the top, move my tool a little bit more so that I can complete that circle until that is crossing the rest of the wire. Take my tool out so you see that nice little loop there with a nice bend. And I'm going to hold that with one pair of flat nose pliers. And then grab my other flat nose and we're gonna wrap this around three times. So that's one, bring it back to the starting point two, and that's technically three, but I just squeeze that a little bit more so you can see that third one. Okay, and now we need to cut the tail. We're going to clip that with our flat nose, or our, fl our, our flesh cutters, I'm sorry, and cut that as close to piece as possible so you don't have that much to tuck in. And then we're just going to tighten that up a little bit here and pinch that down in there while turning it so that it lays nice and flat. This is going to be your hardest part if you're not a wire wrapper. You can watch other tutorials available on YouTube on how to make a wire wrapped head pin. I still have a little tail there. And when you make your cut, make sure you hold that little piece that you're cutting so it doesn't fly off and hit you in the eyes. So you see we have this nice little coiled eye pin. That's one side. So now you're going to feed one of these sleeves through. This is vintage plastic. I'm going to tighten that up a little bit so I know my coils are tight. And I'm going to do a little 90 degree bend at the end of that. And put my round nose back in. 
curve that around, bring the rest around until it crosses. Take my tool out and you have a nice little loop there. Grab it again with the flat nose. And you might not have enough to do three times around, just go around as many times as you can. So there's one, two, I'm going to change, switch the piece around so I can work. Because we're getting low on wire here. And this is where you're just going to try to squeeze that end in and cut off what's left if you have to. I did say this was the more time-consuming part of it, didn't I? <laughs> and I'm just going to straighten everything out so that it hangs nice. Now, are those loops going the same way or alternate ways? These loops will need to go in the same direction because okay. the jump ring will turn it in a different way direction from the ear wire. All right, so we have that piece done. I'm gonna attach that to our ear wire. I've already opened the little whoop loop at the end of the ear wire for time purposes. So I'm just feeding one end of that through and I'm gonna close it back up. And squeeze it all shut. And there you go. There's that part. You're going to do that twice. <clears throat> so now we have all of these little head pins here we need to do our pattern on. I like to do the two different ones first. That would be these middle ones here. So I'm going to put a leaf down. I'm gonna put this little wood looking vintage plastic piece down. And then this tiny little blue bead. Okay, there's those two. And now we have our greenery. So I'm going to hold the three of those together. We're going to feed our leaves down. And then these little green tubes. And all these pieces will come in the kit if you purchase from our website. Everything will be pre-measured for you. So all you need to do is the fun part. Okay, so there's those three. That's gonna be our middle piece. And I have also pre-opened the jump rings for time purposes, but your jump rings will not come pre-opened. So if nobody has opened a jump ring before in their lives, it's gonna look like this. And a lot of people have learned this incorrectly, so. Yes. So I'm going to hold one side with a flat nose and open the other side to the side with another flat nose. I opened it to the side, not like this, like some people would open it like a Pac-Man mouth. We don't want to do that. That will bend your jump ring permanently out of shape. So when you close it back up again, you're doing the same thing. You're going back to your starting point and you're going to line up those sides, the two ends. I kind of like to give it a little wiggle 
that kind of tempers the wire and hardens it up a little bit so it's stronger. And there might be a little bit of shaping you need to do to get it back into shape, but I don't worry about it too much with this piece because you want a little boho look to it, so it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is take one of these jump rings and feed it onto the little donut, vintage plastic and close it up. So I'm holding it one side with a flat nose. I'm taking another flat nose, kind of wiggling it shut until you meet the other side. And I'm just gonna straighten it out a little bit. There you go. Doesn't have to be perfect again, it kind of adds to the design a little bit if it's more organic instead of polished and finished. So we are gonna load all seven jump rings onto the donut. Kind of shimmying it a little bit as I close it, temper that wire up. There you go. So explain why you're saying you're tempering the wire. What are you doing actually? I'm actually hardening the wire up a little bit so that it's gonna be stronger. So as some people may not know, the more you work with wire, the harder it gets. That's correct. And a lot of times you'll even have to um, heat it up to make it soft again. Mm -hmm. But as you work with wire, so as she's moving those back and forth, the point at which it's flexing in the back is actually becoming harder to keep that seal together. Okay, we got two more. We're wiggling that shut. And this is all muscle memory, so the more you do it, the easier it'll be. Yeah, it's just a lot to get those tools in your hands at the it beginning. <laughs> yep. And get everyone's used to using tools. Right. And everyone finds their own technique too. So what works easiest for me might not work well for you. That's all stuff we learn as we go. We're so all use your tools how you want, but use your tools. Yes. See, we have all seven on here now. Great. And we are going to take one jump ring and we're going to open it back up side to side, just a little bit, just enough to get it through the bottom of that eye pin. And then we're gonna close it back up we have a piece that looks like that now. Great, getting closer. Almost done. All right, so in between each of these jump rings, we're going to have to hang these leaves. So you're going to, this is where it helps to have a multi-step tool because you have all different sizes, you have six different sizes instead of having to find something that's gonna be the same size as these jump rings. Yes, because all these loops are the same. Yep. So, I'm going to put that then in my tool at the very end of that wire. And I'm turning it around on that mandrel until I meet the other side where that loop started. So I have this big ring now. I'm gonna take my flat nose right where that wire ended and I'm gonna give it a slight bend. So it looks like a giant eye pin. 
and we're going to repeat that on the other four. Grab the very end, go around, didn't quite meet. Sometimes that wire is a little springy and it opens up on you again, but you just gently make it go where it needs to go. And we're bending that just a little bit. Here we have another giant eye pin. Three more. And while I'm going around the tool, I find myself kind of pulling the bottom so that it gets really tight against your tool and you don't have a loop that's bigger. Make that little bend there. Two more. And my tool is really old and well used, so it's <laughs> dirty. Don't let your tools get like this. A little olive oil on them helps clean them up. One more bend. Kind of reshape that a little bit. Last one. Okay, so one more time, slowly repeat for you. Grab it all the way at the end of that wire, curl it around, kind of give it some tension. And I also guide the wire with my pointer finger, my, so it stays nice and tight on that tool until we come all the way to the other side. Stick that flat nose in there. Right where that end meets the long part. part. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna make a slight bend again. And just straighten it all out. But I have made these loops a little bit bigger than our sample earring here. Just to show you that if, if they're a little bit too long for you or you don't like all that metal showing, you can choke up on it a little bit and just have a little less wire and a little more fun. Nice. And then they're shorter for those who don't like extremely long earrings. But if you were going to do exactly what I did here and make them the same size as the jump ring, if you have one of these clever multi-tools, and they're not very expensive, that would be the third one in, fourth one in, I'm sorry. So that would be one, two, three, fourth one in. Now we're going to finish our earrings. So I, before I start, like to line them up so I don't make any mistakes lay my pattern out. The first one we're going to feed on is one that has the green glass tube bead. We're going to open this up just like we did our jump rings. So open it to the side and make gentle movements. You don't want to bend it out of shape. And so you're going to go past that first jump ring that will be on the outside. You're going to feed this through your donut. And 
and then you're gonna close it just like you did the jump rings. Just kinda give it a little wiggle as you close it. And there you go. That's one. If I could hold it steady. Very nice. We're gonna go past the next jump ring then and add our first wood bead on. So you're alternating with these and the jump rings you've already put on. I am. The other thing you need to keep in mind though if you're going to do a larger loop is that your jump rings are not going to be the same size as that loop, so that's actually going to pass through the jump rings that you've put on there. But if you want to get adventurous and go larger, you can make your own jewel jump rings. And you could always put some little danglies on the jump rings. Yep. That would prevent them from jumping through. Absolutely. There's all Add different some texture kinds. texture above. All different things you can do when you want to step outside the box. Our next one is going to be another leaf one. Open that to the side. It's going to go. The other thing you need to pay attention to is make sure that that bend you're putting on the donut shape in the same direction so that you don't have the bend in the back when the last one was in the front. You want them to all go in the same direction. Close that up. Two more. It's a little busy. <laughs> and our last one. Open it slightly to the side. The very last one. And it's going to give me trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and then close it up. And here you have it. Very nice. Gives it a little different look having the bigger loops and it's shorter. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jen. Hey, right, thanks guys. Have fun.